This is BTV Business Television. Welcome to BTV Business Television. I'm Jessica Kachachak. And I'm Taylor Tone. On today's show, an industry that has tripled investment since 2015 and for the first time has surpassed the $1 trillion benchmark. Can you guess what it is? We're talking about the renewable energy sector. And on today's show, we uncover early stage investment opportunities to help make you some green. Wind generation or solar generation, it is now the lowest cost form of electricity anywhere in the world. It looks and feels like traditional styrofoam. That project alone diverted 200,000 pounds of drywall waste from the landfill. TMX, the parent company of both the TSX and TSX Venture Exchange, recently hosted the Canadian Climate Investor Conference in Toronto. Their mission? To bring some of the $27 billion of equity financing raised by the exchanges to the clean tech space. Their aim was to showcase the growing clean technology ecosystem within Canada and the investment opportunities. Canada has obviously made climate commitments uh, in terms of reducing our GHG emissions to 2005 levels by 2030. So in terms of what these companies are doing, they're improving the climate not only for Canadians, but they're developing technologies that may help cut global emissions. Canada is known for mining, it's known for energy. We need to profile these companies more for investors to understand what they're doing, get them excited about these companies, because I truly believe that the Canadian clean tech space will not only have a positive impact on Canada, but also globally, because there's some fantastic technology here. This year, the Toronto Stock Exchange and Venture Exchange opened the market on site at CCIC, the second annual Canadian Climate Investor Conference. Global investments in energy transition technologies have almost tripled since 2015 and in 2022 exceeded 1 trillion US dollars. When you think of the clean tech space, you likely think of solar, hydro and wind energy generation. And you probably haven't thought about construction. The construction industry emits 37% of the world's carbon dioxide, making it one of the most crucial industries in need of innovation in the world's clean energy transition. Traditional construction, which is typically gypsum board and steel stud construction, whether you build that today and you tear it down in five years, 10 years, whatever that life cycle is, ultimately it will end up in a landfill. With dirt, the solution is infinite in that it never ends up in a landfill. And it allows us to remain relevant over time because it is adaptable. We have what we call design for disassembly. This is a process where materials can be easily taken apart to support adaption or reuse. Based in Canada, with offices in the US, they have been tracking the environmental impact on many projects over a 20-year period. A project in Texas that we delivered 10 years ago, over a million square feet. So we do multiple projects of that magnitude on an annualized basis and many smaller ones in between. That project alone diverted 100,000 pounds of drywall waste from the landfill, which ultimately then is roughly 85,000 pounds of carbon emission that was prevented from entering the environment. So with that, we actually have product that's in its fourth generation of use today. We are a small piece of a very large pie, so um, the opportunity therein lies, but we continue to grow when many parts of the industry are shrinking. Dirt is technology-enabled, off-site, pre-manufactured, multi-trade construction. I know that's a mouthful. Anything between the floor and the ceiling in any vertical, so healthcare, education, government, and commercial office interiors, we provide construction solutions for those that are pre-manufactured. About 40% of solid waste in the U.S. comes from construction and demolition. That's one of the things dirt is trying to change. Environmental solutions is actually in our name. And when we were founded 20 years ago, that was a key principle or core element was how do we create an environment that is infinitely sustainable? And by utilizing dirt as a manufacturing or construction solution, if you will, it allows you to remain not just relevant over time, but ultimately that material will never end up in a landfill.
Hydropower accounts for 18% of the world's electricity. It is the number one electricity source in Canada. In 2022, 16.5 million tons of roofing shingles went into landfills in North America alone. That's a massive problem and a massive opportunity. We're tackling one of the most hidden but obvious problems, and that's of shingles going into landfill. We take asphalt shingles and split them up into their component parts. We bring asphalt shingles in the front end of our facility, and at the back end comes asphalt, aggregate, and fiberglass or paper fiber for, for older tires. Shingles are estimated to be on over 80% of single-family detached homes in the United States. The industry problem is massive. In 2022, 16.5 million tons of shingles went into landfill in North America. So our ability is to deploy facilities that can divert around about 40,000 tons per year per facility. To help the planet and meet stakeholders' expectations, industrial processes must consider its carbon footprint. Northstar allows a 100% landfill diversion reprocesses components for second use, and reduces the quantity of new resources needed. The three steps for ESG, in my opinion, are always, number one, you have to develop the technology, and you have to prove the technology, and then you have to build your pilot plant, and then you have to build your first commercial plant. So we've done the first two, and so now it's all about delivering Calgary commercially, and we expect that to be up and running by you know, early next year. The thing that excites me most about this is that we know the industry wants the change to happen and I think that we are completely on the leading edge of that change. I think we'll have the first commercial facility delivered in the industry. We'll be the first people to solve the problem. Leadership is really important and I, that's what really excites me. We get the chance to lead. Working closely with municipalities, local governments and strategic partners is essential for Northstar. Their facilities are expected to sell to major road paving companies and shingle manufacturers. Coming up on BTV, more promising investment opportunities for your green portfolio. One small pellet, which is uh... Well, less than an inch uh, tall and uh, less than a half inch in diameter contains the same energy as a, a, a rail car full of coal. This episode is brought to you by the Toronto Stock Exchange and the TSX Venture Exchange. You're watching BTV. Revolve is an owner, operator and developer of renewable energy projects in North America for the commercial sector. With wind, solar and battery storage, the growth opportunity for investors is massive. We are electrifying our lives. We're demanding a lot of electricity, a lot of energy, clean energy specifically. And Revolve Renewable Power, it's generating uh, renewable energy that we're providing to our customers. Revolve has two business units. The first is utility-scale development focused on large renewable projects like wind, solar and battery storage projects. Revolve's second business is in the distributed generation market. These projects are installed at industrial and commercial customers' locations and Revolve provides tools and technologies to the end user to generate their own power. 100 megawatts of power generated from just one of their utility scale projects can provide electricity to approximately 120,000 homes. That Revolve started in 2012. So since then we have a successful track record of 1,550 megawatts of solar and wind projects that we developed and sold to a global operator of utility scale projects. The company's projects are designed to generate stable, long-term returns through the production of renewable energy, supported by government incentives and increasing consumer demand for green solutions. We are providing to companies to support their targets on ESG, and to comply with their sustainable development goals so they can comply as well with their net zero emissions targets.
Nuclear power plants produced 775 billion kilowatt hours of electricity last year, enough to power 72 million homes. Wind and solar generated power are applauded for their zero carbon emissions. However, there's another energy source that has made a massive resurgence, one with a much smaller footprint and also produces zero carbon emissions. Well, uranium is uh, first off the most dense fuel we have uh, by volume, provides you know, the most units of energy out of any given quantity of pounds, kilograms, barrels, what have you. One small pellet, which is uh, well, less than an inch uh, tall and uh, less than a half inch in diameter, contains the same energy as a, a, a rail car full of coal. Encore, the biggest uranium producer in the U.S., has two operating plants, both in Texas. Uranium, uh, its extraction and processing through the entire nuclear fuel cycle is the most heavily regulated industry in the U.S. We're under constant scrutiny of governments, multiple governments, frequent inspections. So it is uh, a very reliable, safe, highly regulated source of uh, clean energy. Well, nuclear power is uh, essential if we're going to have a dependable grid that is always on, about always available electricity. While uh, wind and uh, solar are fine in their own right, they certainly are not a good baseload supply as they aren't dependable. Sun doesn't always shine, wind doesn't always blow. Nuclear, however, is on 24-7, 365. An added benefit is when uranium is extracted using the in-situ recovery process. This is clean simply because uh, of our basically non-invasive techniques. We don't have a big mine, we don't have an open pit, we don't have tailings, we don't have uh, waste rock piles. Derive our uranium through fluids, not rocks. Put nothing toxic in the groundwater. We put oxygen, occasionally a dash of carbon dioxide, and occasionally a dash of baking soda. So our process is extremely friendly to the environment. Similarly, uh, it leads uh, to several economic advantages. By in situ, we have a much shorter permitting time. We have a much shorter construction time, much smaller capex, much smaller opex, and uh, more, most importantly, perhaps, a, a much, much smaller reclamation cost once we're finished with an area. With the recent ban on Russian uranium imports and a four-year run on the spot price, Encore believes they have a strong position within the industry. Being in a debt-free production situation with a healthy cash balance gives us a, a pretty, pretty identifiable and quantifiable advantage in the industry. Before we go to break, more from the TSX on the climate community. Whether it be you know, lithium-ion batteries or recycling of, of certain waste products or generating natural gas or energy from waste. These companies are very well run, experienced board of directors, and they have you know, governance standards in place. So there's a lot of homegrown talent here that's listed on the TSX and on the TSXV uh, with some incredible technology. When we come back, more clean and green investment strategies. And we were uh, blessed to get their highest ranking. And so ours is the most impactful investment that they can measure. This episode is brought to you by the Toronto Stock Exchange and the TSX Venture Exchange. You're watching BTV. The last time you ordered takeout, did you feel a little guilty about the packaging? Evan S is a company looking to completely eradicate single-use plastics. It's a $55 billion industry that they want to help shape with their 100% compostable products. Evan S is a really exciting company that makes compostable food service and packaging. It's a huge industry. It's one that's, you know, it's in its infancy now. It's, it's something that's evolving very, very quickly as we move away from plastics and styrofoam that have you know, clogged our landfills and really created massive problems for us all. You know, we send a lot of food to landfills as well, and it's something that really needs to be addressed. And that's what Evan S really is trying to provide a solution for. The global packaging industry, valued at over $1.1 trillion, is experiencing significant growth. There is a rising demand for sustainable packaging from both businesses and consumers worldwide. Everywhere, including the conference we're at right now, people are using cups, people are using bowls and plates, and you know, all of these things get thrown away. Half of them get thrown away with a little bit of extra food in them. A lot of this, you know, just can't be recycled. You know, they talk about contamination and recycling. It's not only the fact that 
many of these products are, are made of different things, but also, you know, the organics that get tied up with them as well. Switching to compostable products like molded starch eliminates the need for single-use plastics and increases the percentage of food waste that is diverted from landfills. Well, the product that we have is really, really exciting because, you know, it looks and feels like traditional styrofoam. So it's a foam product. It's very, very, you know, rigid. Um, you know, it's, it's insulating. It's basically microwave and oven safe. You know, all of the things that from a food services type product you need. We have a facility in South Carolina that produces straws and some other biopolymers that we built some initial revenue on. But with our Star Fiber product, it's really about licensing the technology out. You know, we're in the core, a technology company. We have multiple patents globally, and really it's about finding strong, large partners in the industry that can take our technology and really supply the industry that they already supply with, you know, traditional products, with something made out of our material, which really, really helps the environment in the long run. With climate change a pressing global issue, RE Royalties has become a source of capital for renewable energy projects with an impressive 63% average annual growth rate. Listen to this. We thought we could create a company that would deliver growth and yield, as well as a positive impact on the environment through reduction in carbon emissions. So we're taking a proven business model from mining and oil and gas called the royalties financing model, and we're the first to apply it to renewable energy. And the renewable energy market is huge. In terms of how big the industry is, it's massive. Worldwide, close to a trillion dollars invested in renewable energy projects last year. That's more than oil and gas, that's more than mining. So it is a massive, massive industry. With all this investment, the industry as a whole has seen some dramatic changes. The overall value of using wind generation or solar generation is enhanced tremendously over what it was 10 years ago. And so it is now the lowest cost form of electricity anywhere in the world. And that's across all jurisdictions. And we're seeing the same thing now apply to the battery space. So battery storage is also on a steep decline in terms of cost and a steep increase in terms of efficiencies. With climate change a pressing issue globally, RE Royalties has become a source of capital for renewable energy projects, currently with about 100 royalties in place. Over the last five years, we've been able to deliver 63% average annual growth in revenues. Last year, we generated $10 million in revenue. And what we do with that currently is we pay a dividend. So we're paying four cents a share per year, uh, about an 8% yield. Our investors are getting both the growth and the yield that we promised, and they're getting the impact that we promised. So that to us is we're, we're meeting our promise. Recently, the S&P Global Group did a review of RE's green bonds, a checkup of where the money goes and what it achieves. And we were uh, blessed to get their highest ranking, so the, the dark green ranking, you know, because there's all sorts of shades of green. And so ours is the most impactful investment that they can measure. If you want numbers, we take about 429,000 tonnes a year of CO2 out of the atmosphere. So, so we're excited about that. Coal is inefficient. Only 33% of its energy is usable. Wind is highly efficient, providing over 1,100%. Globally, energy consumption has increased nearly every year for half a century. Next up, a company building an energy transition portfolio. And did we mention they're profitable? When Quikno Energy first listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange, we came out with a 10-year vision of how we could introduce an energy transition portfolio that would meet the needs of affordability, reliability, and decarbonization. It doesn't just happen in a short-term basis, and it certainly doesn't happen unless you deploy substantial capital. With the introduction of new technologies like electric vehicles and AI, power consumption is at an all-time high. Thank you.
Located in Alberta, the company develops oil and natural gas assets. And the power division's focus is to develop natural gas fired and solar electricity generated projects. This includes 920 megawatts of solar builds and over 1200 megawatts of gas fired projects with two carbon hubs. This is proven technology, it is low risk, and yet it provides a reliable solution. And what the intent is, is to bring these projects to a financial investment decision. That is our focus today. What we're finding is there's an unbelievable opportunity around the capital investment required in this portfolio with the most efficient assets that can compete in any merit order curve. The merit order curve is a way of ranking available sources of energy, especially electrical generation, based on ascending order of price. This order ensures the economically optimal supply of electricity to the grid. There's a tremendous opportunity in this sector right now, and investors should be excited about generative AI and the need for data centers. And the need for electricity is unprecedented. This episode is brought to you by the Toronto Stock Exchange and the TSX Venture Exchange. You're watching BTV. Green bonds have grown to a record $575 billion in 2023. Until now, it's been difficult to know which companies are using these funds effectively. Not allowed to offer any advice since we are an independent opinion provider. We look at the financed projects and how consistent they are with what we call a low carbon, climate resilient future. Projects that are fully aligned to do that low carbon future would achieve a shade of dark green. Projects that may not be fully aligned now, but still have important attributes and contributions to the transition might achieve a shade of light green or medium green. Projects that we think are either entirely business as usual or potentially detrimental or inconsistent with that future would achieve a shade somewhere between red and yellow. We always try to be very clear whether we're talking about sustainability in terms of its stakeholder benefits and attributes or from a financial or credit perspective. This year's Canadian Climate Investor Conference, led by the TMX Group, was a fantastic opportunity for investors looking to green up their portfolio with a wide selection of choices. There's a popular saying around clean energy, don't worry about climate change, do something about it. And for today's featured companies, they're all helping steer toward the color green, both for your wallet and the environment. Thanks for joining us today for BTV. I'm Jessica Kasichak. And I'm Taylor Tone. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Business Television for the latest interviews on companies in the markets. And until next time, may your portfolio prosper.